just to give you a background about me, I am teaching uh, supply chain management uh, courses, logistics, operations management, these types of courses. So uh, with relation to supply chain management, it is considered like uh, complex topics which poses interesting challenges for learners as well as for educators. Uh, explaining the complexity, uh, it will help to create some basic understandings in terms of knowledge, concepts, theories. But there is something more to it. The need to develop a certain uh, type of skills that is required for job market. An important concept in teaching supply chain management is about system thinking. It's about integration, it's about collaboration, and how the weakest link in the supply chain can affect everybody else's performance. Um, based on a current survey conducted by the World Economic Forum on the 21st century skills, the following skills are on the list. Uh, complex problem solving, critical thinking, also, coordinating with others, people management, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making, negotiation, and cognitive flexibility. Not surprisingly, a number of these skills are related to the complexity and how to deal with it as a human uh, interaction. Therefore, it is critical to meet the need of the students, employers, society through developing collaboration. Uh, through developing uh, reflection, through creating like lifelong learning skills. Um, I used one of active learning technique. Uh, it's called immediate feedback assessment technique. And this technique is considered as a competency-based collaborative learning uh, technique in which immediate informative feedback is provided to students by their peers and colleagues and through an, uh, an instrument that is um, previously designed. Okay, so a student in this case will not stop answering the questions, mainly it is multiple choice questions with four answers until they had found the correct answer. So here, if we say, for example, for a multiple choice question test with, I, with uh, four options, a student would receive a full credit if the star appeared in the beginning or uh, at the first scratch. Then if not, if they didn't get the, um, the, the star from the first uh, time, they will keep trying four times until they get it. So every time they will get like a portion of the grade. If they get it the second time, then they will get maybe 75%. The third time, it is 25%. And of course, if it is the fourth time, they will get zero. That means they uh, use all the alternative uh, they have. Uh, so here for um, uh, immediate feedback assessment technique, it is considered an excellent way of becoming even more engaged with the topic. And it provides a lot of fun while learning. I remember when I first used this technique, I didn't have these scratch sheets. So what I did is that for each question, I created um, like a, tiny uh, paper cuts where I have stars and I float it and I write, for example, A, B, C, D. And the one with the correct answer would have will have a star in it. You can imagine uh, the handcrafting, I, I, I kept working, like doing cutting, writing, and, and I have to do it for multi uh, groups, like um, for each session, I might have around 50 groups. So I have to repeat that process 50 times for five or 10 questions. So it is like, it was like time consuming, but uh, I mean, I was happy because I saw my students happy. I saw my students engaged. I saw my students like doing quizzes. So, um, I did it like several semesters, then I uh, requested when I saw the improvements in students grades and so I requested uh, these um, immediate feedback assessment techniques sheets and uh, thanks uh, for the college who bought these uh, sheets for me. And the fun now is becoming more because I'm focusing on the, the, the questions and the engagement more than spending time just creating the sheets myself. Um, so for 
the uh, this technique the uh, literature shows that uh, with the uh, ability to measure students um, uh, knowledge so here there are a lot of advantages uh, with the um, this technique it facilitates students active involvement involvements and learning through the ability to measure students partial knowledge since the students will uh, will answer some of the questions correctly and some of them they will learn how to answer them correctly throughout the process also to obtain the feedback on uh, the item by item basis so they don't have to wait until i finish marking the, ex the the quiz and then come back one week later with the correct answer um the discussion itself also the literature shows that it shows their motivation Zainab, we seem to have lost your audio. I think she's frozen. I might have lost her altogether. Yeah. We'll hang tight just a minute. She's halfway around the world, so. I know, huh? I guess while we wait for her to connect, is there anyone who has used this method before? Media feedback. Well, I guess most online quizzes are immediate feedback. And I guess I've used some of those, but definitely not in the way that she's describing. This is seems pretty cool. I've seen those scratch off sheets before. They're they're pretty neat. We had a biology instructor in the UN Basin at uh, Utah State University who used those for biology exams, and they were really cool. So, 
how about um, the difference between like waiting till the end of the exam to share the, the questions and sharing the answers right after they answer the question? Anybody done that? At Utah State University, we have implemented a tool called Atomic Assessments, and it will it runs in Canvas, um, and it will allow us to do that very same thing. So they can um, take a shot at the question, and if they don't do well on that question, they can try again. Um, the instructor can set how many times they can try that question. Um, so if, they're, if it's a multiple choice question, they can do it, you know, three or two times, uh, and also. Um, you can set on there if you want to allow students to be able to take the entire assessment again. So kind of a neat thing for students to be able to get feedback and knowing what they got right or wrong. Um, that, that system also allows for adding uh, in comments about each of the individual answer choices. So if there's something that um, you don't um, think that students will get or they might be tempted to choose a certain answer, because it looks really similar to what might be right or what could be right. Um, you can use that as a, a, a reteaching moment um, to give some additional information or to tell them to look at a different place in the textbook so that they can get some information uh, and, and learn more about that topic if they missed it. I think for some students when they have like quiz anxiety or something, this helps because if they have a little win, if they get some of those questions right, it can help them feel better about uh, what they know in the, the chapter and can help them kind of give them encouragement along the way to be able to do that next step. What other things have you used to provide immediate feedback to students and how has that worked for you? I guess for me, mostly it's just like online based stuff like the online homework for I'm a math instructor. So um, that works pretty well. I don't only rely on online, but incorporating that can be helpful for the immediate feedback. I haven't done it for for tests though. So do you strict, uh, teach strictly online or do you have face-to-face -face or other types of classes too? Face-to-face. -to -face. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, math, that's one of those where you have students a lot of times maybe come to the board to work problems. Do you do that kind of thing in your class? Is that helpful? So I have. I. I'm not doing that this semester too often that we we have one day a week where it's like um, homework day and which is optional um, and in those classes yeah we we do things like that but for the most part on a day-to-day -day basis i don't do that okay what about nikki or sarah Um, just just Canvas quizzes. I haven't done anything that's really um, immediate feedback otherwise. So I'm I'm excited to I have taken notes that I need to look more into atomic assessments and how I can use it in my in my course. Awesome. So it looks like Zanya or Zanya, sorry, I keep saying your name wrong, has joined us again. Let's see if her audio is working now. Hi, I already finished with my slides, so I'm not sure when it did disconnected. Oh, no, no. Um, let me think which which slide it was on. Um, oh. It was just like one or two slides after the initial picture of the scratch off. Oh, I have been talking to myself all, all this time. So, so it was, uh, uh, which slide, sorry? It was, was the it? quote from um, 
it was a reference from 2017. From the okay, literature. So, I remember right. Oh, okay. So do I have a chance to just go over it again? Yeah, let me remake you the co-host. If you want to try and share your screen again. I didn't get any notice saying that I had been disconnected. I was on my PowerPoint slides and suddenly oh, I'm just. Sorry. I, yeah, we tried to talk. <clears throat> sorry, we tried to talk to you and I tried to message you, but you yeah. just disconnected. So. Oh. so sorry about that. We were really excited to hear what you had to say. We've still got 15 minutes, so. OK, I, 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 I'll do it. So can you please give me the permission to share my slides? Yes, I already made you the co-host, so you should see the option to share your screen at the bottom okay. of the page. There we go. Okay. So do you see my slides? Yep, we're seeing them. OK, OK. Um, so th that four. was the last slide? I think slide four is where we left off. Is that right? So that was the last slide, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, okay, um, I'm I'm not sure if you heard the story of how I did start with the um, immediate feedback assessment. Um, no, so uh, here, uh, uh, when I started um, th this technique, I didn't have the, the scratch sheets. So what I did is that I uh, developed the quiz of uh, five questions and uh, then uh, had uh, like sm small sheets of paper plotted with one of them has a star inside it. And I, I created that repeatedly for the five questions and about 50 sets of that so that each group of my students can have one set of these uh, flooded sheets. And um, it, it was time consuming for me at that time to do it. But when I saw the, uh, the excitement, when I saw the happiness uh, on my students' face, I, it, I mean, it, it, it was totally fine to spend the four hours doing it. Uh, and I kept repeating the same uh, thing uh, like multiple semesters until I convinced the dean to get me um, the immediate feedback assessment sheet. Um, so uh, I w when I co like convinced this, uh, the dean, I collected some sort of uh, quantitative and qualitative data from my, from my students uh, saying that their performance has improved. Um, uh, therefore, after I received my first set of these scratch sheets, I applied it to my supply chain management course. I did have around uh, 204 students, um, and uh, it was my first time where students actually were was excited to have uh, an assessment. They were excited to have a quiz. And it was also the first time for me to have students not complaining about their grades and trying to convince me that they did have the correct answer. Um, the way I did it is that I allowed the students to do, to do their assessments individually. So it was like 10 multiple choice questions and they have to, to do it within uh, 10 minutes and then uh, after they do the, the assessments individually, I allowed them to sit in groups of four students, some of them four to five students, and then I handed the uh, immediate feedback assessment sheets, the scratch sheets with them, and they started going question by question, discussing the answer, trying to convince their peers, smiling, laughing. It was 
the first time that I have students talking to each other and trying to convince, laughing, that it was very loud in the class, but everybody was happy. Even when they get the, the wrong answer, they was happy about it because they said, okay, we learned something. And um, it, it, it was fun. It was, in, they said, they enjoy it. It was interesting. They, they I, I got very, very uh, advantages reported. They uh, eventually improved their grades. They were very relaxed and less stressed during the assessment. So um, uh, what I noticed that uh, uh, that students' uh, uh, performance has improved uh, to, to, a, to, a, to a great extent, to a great extent from some of the students from getting an, an F or a, a D in the assessments to get, for example, uh, C plus or uh, B minus in that assessment. And it happened all just through learning from each other and discussing with each other. So here I do have uh, some uh, of my students' um, notes uh, after the, um, or uh, some of their thoughts after doing the, uh, the quiz. So uh, one of the students says we learned from each other and be, we were very confident about our answers. It is very beneficial and we want this exercise again. Another student says he, it is, was the best, uh, best way of, to learn, to think, to discuss. And this way we share different opinion and it was interesting. Um, another student said it was, I like it so much. It was fun. I we hoped we can do it again. Um, Another student say, I like the way of the quiz and I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, great communication and discussion between group members, high chance to get more points. So uh, students were, were very, very happy about their performance, about their activities. Many students highlighted that they had constructed a new knowledge. Uh, a new understanding to the uh, subject, to the content that they have uh, been examined. And they practiced several types of uh, skills during this assessment, um, negotiation, um, discussion, time management, and so on. So the learning benefits of the immediate feedback assessment components uh, of the team assessments were widely acknowledged by uh, the students. So. Um, they were very, very happy about it. Myself, I believe that applying such te techniques in a teaching supply chain um, is very, very critical in preparing students to deal with uh, real life supply chain challenges and the corresponding complex complexity. Um, creating like or preparing brains that will master supply chain because managing supply chain in real life is very, very complex as I indicated at the beginning of my presentation. So um, the first thing to be aware of uh, is the role of the teacher in this learning process. Al Albert Einstein once said that he used to say that a uh, Rather than teaching his students, his objective was to provide them with the condition in which they could learn. And that was my aim for my students. Um, um, I tried to teach them the concepts, but for me to teach them how to uh, learn from each other, how to become lifelong learners, how to be curious about things and start digging for answers. I try to provide them with the uh, environment that they will um, uh, create the environment for them to, in, to build in these types of skills that is required for contemporary uh, businesses and um, uh, especially in supply chain management. So um, that's all. I try to sum up my presentation. Of course, this project um, uh, actually uh, out of, uh, of this project, I collected some quantitative and some qualitative data as well. And um, uh, uh, the qualitative parts of this project, uh, hopefully I will get it published in one of the uh, academic journals and um, uh, so I try to discuss the qualitative part of it. 
So if you have any question um, or any thing to discuss here, uh, please let me know. I have a question. Yes, please. So you say that there's a like a really good discussion on these quizzes after they fi they finish taking them. Uh, I'm curious how or exactly what the students are discussing if they already know what the correct answer is. No, um, they don't know the correct answer. Okay. okay. So first, individually, they solved the 10 question, multiple choice questions. They did it individually. So they don't know what is the correct answer. They don't know if the, the answer they selected is correct or not. Uh, after that, I distribute, I, I divided them into groups of four to five students, and I gave them uh, the uh, immediate feedback assessment scratch sheet. And they have to go question by question, read the question in the group, discuss it, and then as a group, they, may, they need to make a decision. So they need to select one of the answers. Uh, let's say they selected B, they will go and scratch B. If the B is the correct answer, they will find the star, and then they will get the full mark as a group. If the B is not answered, they will be given another chance to scratch another letter, and they will keep scratching until they get the correct answer. Um, so here, how they need to discuss, they need to convince their uh, uh, teammate that this is the correct answer, why it is, and why should they go for it? So um, some of them might get the correct answer from the beginning and in their individual sheet, and maybe they will feel shy or they are not confident enough to convince their classmates or teammates that this is the correct answer. But as they move with the questions, I noticed these shy students started talking, started saying, and uh, they started discussing, arguing about the correct answers. So they will know the answers after they scratch the sheet. Oh yeah, totally makes sense. Got it, thanks. It looks like Mark has a question. He says, sorry, you joined late. Do you find that most of your students have experienced similar feedback techniques in their prior educations, for example, in high school? Uh, no, actually not even in their uh, college uh, teaching. So uh, it was the first time to go through uh, this experience. Thank you. So are they used to working in groups at, at your institution? Excuse me? Are they used to working in groups? Yeah, they used to work in groups, but you know, um, we do have some cultural barriers that, for example, um, some of the ladies will not feel comfortable collaborating in a team with the male students. Okay, um, normally I, I do this exercise at the beginning of the um, semester so that students get to know each other. And they, because they have to work in, the, in, in a group eventually for their projects, either the written paper or the presentation. So they, yes, they do work in a group, but it is not in the class. They, they have to work outside the class and present their paper like a presentation or a paper to me, but I never had the chance to see them discussing or uh, working together on a, a task. So do you keep them in the same groups for the whole term? Um, that's what eventually happened. After this exercise, they, start, they uh, stick to, to each other. Normally, most of them will continue with the same uh, group till the end of the semester. Oh, that's awesome. We have about five minutes left for questions if anybody else has anything.
I'm really impressed that you put up, set up the sheets by hand before you got access to the scratch off cards. Yes. It takes a lot of dedication to your students and your teaching method. I know, but when I saw them like interacting, smiling, and discussing, I mean, the four hours I spent in doing that for um, more than 200 students, I mean, um, I, I was happy. I was happy that I did this. I did th th that exercise and I was happy that I convinced the uh, the college administration to go further and to obtain these types of uh, scratch sheets. I mean, without this trial, nobody will even know about this technique and nobody will believe that it will have a positive impact on students' engagement, active learning, and or eventually students' performance. Yeah, that's great. I've, I've seen this work um, on an individual basis. And as a student, I participated in group testing. And mm -hmm. I really loved that opportunity. Um, we did it the same way. So we took our exams mm -hmm. first on it individually. And then we worked as groups to take a second exam. And our instructor, what they did is took 75% of our individual score and then 25% of our group score um, to make up our final grade for that, that exam. So I thought it was an interesting way to, to still hold the students accountable for their mm -hmm. own individual work, but then to yeah. also uh, encourage them to work together to uh, kind of yes. convince each other, as you said. Mm -hmm. of the I, I did use a similar uh, technique as well, but it was uh, 65 for individual and 35 for the group. Okay, so did you have them then turn in their individual yes. uh, assignments first before you passed out the, the scratch off cards? Yes, yes. And then are the scratch off cards, they're just doing one per group then? Do I understand that right? Yes, it is one for group. I the, A single scratch card has 100 question. What I do is that I, I do cut them into tens so that I can use a, a single scratch card for different groups several times. That is great. Anybody else have any other questions? We got about two minutes left. Then we'd really appreciate you staying up late and presenting on this topic today. It's been nice to hear from, from somebody with a, a different um, perspective and on this new strategy that a lot of people hadn't heard. So thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and ideas with us today. Oh, well, thanks for being here and attending my presentation. Have a great evening. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you.